let's take a minute to talk about what are the causes. What are the main drivers of scoliosis? Look at this for a second. This is a child who never had any treatment. Check this out. You see that they had a very mild case, very mild case, and then from one year to the next, all of a sudden, the whole thing explodes into a huge curve. What causes this? Why does this happen? Well, we know, again, from the research that scoliosis is essentially a genetic condition. They've even identified which genes are weak in the body. But it doesn't mean that everybody who has that genetic weakness is gonna develop scoliosis. It means that there's a predisposition. In fact, we know that if one parent has a genetic weakness of four scoliosis, approximately 20% of their kids are gonna have scoliosis. And if two parents have it, approximately 50% of their kids. This is a, a typical. I had a, a patient from Chicago, eight kids, six of them had profound scoliosis and two had nothing at all. So it doesn't mean because the parents have the genetic weakness that the child will develop a scoliosis. It's a statistical thing. Now why? Well, we don't know completely why. This is why scoliosis is still considered to be an idiopathic condition. Idiopathic means no known cause. We know that the genetics are a powerful factor. We know also there's another thing called epigenetics. Epigenetics is a, a scientific term which means the effect of the environment on the scoliotic weakness, on the genetically weak person. These epigenetic factors vary widely. And at this point, we've identified 47 different things that can contribute to the development or the progression of the curve. Weird things, like for example, if an infant swims in an indoor heated pool, they're more likely to develop scoliosis. We know that if the mother is older at the time of birth, like you know, not, not 25 or 30, but let's say the mother is 40 years old or 45 years old when she has the baby, there's more likelihood of the scoliosis developing. There's one demographic group that has a higher incidence of scoliosis, and that is Scandinavians. Why? Well, they think it's because they lack of uh, sunlight during a significant part of the year. So they have low vitamin D levels. Low vitamin D levels have also been implicated in the development of scoliosis. Let me show you something else that's very interesting. This is called asynchronous growth. Now we know when the child is rapidly growing is when the scoliosis has the greatest risk of progression. So let's look at this spine. Normally these spines come with a steel flex cable in them. I've removed this cable and I replaced it with this thick piece of wire. If you can look in here, you can see the wire right over here. Now that wire is sitting where the spinal cord would be. I'm gonna pull on the spinal cord to make it short. Now look what happens to the spine. The person is bending over backwards. You never see anybody like that. Why? Because the eyes must see the horizon level. We've had curves come in here in excess of 120, 130, 140 degrees. We had a case recently come in here of 180 degree curve, and yet the child's head was in the middle and their eyes were level. So look what happens when I bring the head back up. The spine must twist into a scoliosis because the cord is short. This is one of the drivers of scoliosis. We find this commonly in maybe about 30% of patients that come in here will exhibit this. So let's say we give them exercises. Let's say we put them in a brace. Anything short of surgery, how are we gonna straighten that spine? But what if we could release the spinal cord? So I'm gonna let my hand go, and you see what happens is the spine will very naturally straighten. This is based on the work of a Dr. Roth. He first, he by the way, he was a neuroradiologist. This is a radiologist who specializes in brain and spinal cord. And he saw this phenomenon in people with scoliosis, but he was not a clinician. He was a neuroradiologist. He was commenting on it. People thought, okay, very interesting, but what are you gonna do about it? A physical therapist in Australia wrote a book called Mobilization of the Nerve System. And in that book, he discusses how can you lengthen the spinal cord? How can you stretch effectively the spinal cord? So we use Dr. Roth's concept of this asynchronous growth. The bony column grows up, but the cord does not match the speed at which it goes up. The cord is short, the spine buckles into the curve. Then we use an effective program stretching to lengthen the spinal cord, and this then allows the child to improve from the exercises, from bracing if that's necessary. So what are the underlying causes of scoliosis? Many, many things. Essentially, we know it's a genetic condition. 
We know it's impacted by the environmental aspects, these epigenetic factors. And for example, Eastern Kinner's growth. So there are many complications, but we know with idiopathic scoliosis how to effectively treat it. We know how to get to the point where we can reduce the curve size, we can stop the progression. Thanks for watching. I hope you found all this information helpful. Please subscribe if you'd like to have more information about scoliosis, and don't forget to hit the bell. That'll alert you whenever we publish new information. And if you've got any questions, write them in the comments field, and I'm gonna make sure to address them in a future video. Thanks for watching.